Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and this is Life in Motion and welcome to 2021. It's an exciting one. I'm wearing slightly smarter clothes and I'm starting with this. The Porsche Cayman has been around since 2005 and has since evolved into this, the 718 Cayman. However, when Porsche released the 718 Cayman to replace the 981 Cayman, they released it with a four-cylinder turbocharged engine and this caused people to explode. Now, before I get into why a four-cylinder turbocharged engine can make people explode, let's have a look around the outside. The 718 Cayman has managed to capture the iconic 911 shape with the wide hips at the back as they taper through to the front of the car. The big large side air intakes. As you move to the back of the car, the sloping roof line to these centrally placed exhaust tips. This particular car is finished off in A-gate grey with the 20 inch Carrera S alloys painted in satin and black, which are an option. As you move to the front of the car, you've got the PDLS Plus or Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. What it gives you are these four little spotlights. As you drive along and you turn left and right, the lights will turn with you and it has an automatic beam as well. They are highly recommended. They're very, very good. Now this car has got a standard body kit. However, I prefer the GTS body kit, which is slightly more angular and gives the car more of a sporty feel. And if you are looking for something sporty, then the black wheels and the black spoiler tie in nicely with the black exhaust tips, which are again, an option. And with that, let's have a look inside. And once you step into the Cayman, you're instantly greeted with these lovely Sports Seats Plus, which are full black leather seats, and they are two-way electrically adjustable. However, you can go up from there and basically have the whole thing electrically adjustable if you'd like to. And as I look in front of me, I've got this lovely leather wrap steering wheel. This is the multifunction one, again, as an option, which is my multifunction buttons and a heated steering wheel function just in the middle there. If you turn that on, it's really, really lovely when you first start the car. As I look in front of me, I've got the three dials, which is iconic of the Cayman. I've got my rev counter, my speedo, and on the right-hand side, I've got a digital display, which gives me my music and even my navigation if I'd like to. And as we move into the middle of the car, we have the touchscreen system, which is standard on all cars. I only really use that to plug in my phone to use Apple CarPlay, which I do via a USB socket in here. And there's also one in the glove box. As we move down from the touchscreen, you've got things like your climate control, heated seats, your automatic gearbox in this car. And as you move further down, you've got optional buttons depending on what you have fitted in the car. And as we move over to the passenger side, we have a really nice feature which is on commonly on most Porsches, which is the cup holders. Hidden away nicely within the dashboard and then can be made available when you want them. But you can still put that little piece of aluminium back so it looks quite smart. And then below these are your glove box. Now, it doesn't fit a huge amount, but what are you going to be traveling? I've got a couple of pairs of sunglasses and I've got the USB cables ready to plug in if I'd like to. And inside, I've got the Bose surround sound system. The standard system is great, but the Bose is just a little bit better. And also when you plug in your phone directly, the quality is superb. But now it's time to stop talking about the outside, the inside of the car and get it out on the road to see what it's like. And welcome to the inside of the Porsche 718 Cayman. Now, something I haven't gone through is numbers. I know a lot of you like numbers. So let's go through the range. The car I'm in today is the entry level model for the Caymans, the 718 Cayman. They then go up to the Cayman T, the Cayman S, the Cayman GTS, and the range shopping Cayman GT4. Now, the car I'm in today, the entry level model, which is the 718 Cayman, starts at £44,790. It has a two litre four cylinder turbocharged engine producing roughly 300 horsepower means with the manual gearbox will get you to 0 to 62 in around about 5.1 seconds or with the pdk the automatic gearbox is around about 4.7 jesus as we move through the group 
the Cayman S jumps up to 350 horsepower, the Cayman GTS 400, and the GT4 roughly 420. All the Nord 60s just go down and down from there. Now I personally prefer the PDK or the automatic gearbox, which is a seven speed double clutch system, which is in my opinion, much better than the manual, but I use this car every day. So I don't need to be racing from gear change to gear change. This car is a 2018 model. And fortunately, it means it hasn't got quite the filters that the other cars have got. So when I turn this car to sport, put it in manual and kick down, it makes a superb sound. Our slight burn was coming from the exhaust. Oh. Now, ride quality for a sports car is important. You want it to be sporty, but also you want it to be comfortable enough that you can use on the road every day. And this car fortunately does exactly that. This car actually is slightly more comfortable than the previous car I had, which was a 2015 Mini Junk People Works with its run flat tires. Now, if you press this little button, it gives you extra boost. So let's press it and see what happens. It makes it very quick. I know a lot of people think that a manual gearbox is better, but I'm not exactly bored of this automatic. Oh God. And the Porsche Sim when it came in, unfortunately revs very, very high. 7,000 RPM, which is actually amazing for a turbocharged engine. Now, one thing I love about the Sim when it came in is how user-friendly it is around town. Now, I personally use this car every day. It's my daily driver. And so I want something that's easy to use, on short journeys to and from the shops than it is on longer journeys on motorways and this car does exactly that. Now the car is set up with a mid-engine and rear-wheel drive configuration which means most of the weight is over the back however it doesn't mean that it doesn't slip because it really does. When it comes to performance the car's got around about 300 horsepower with the automatic gearbox it comes in around 4.7 seconds to 60 which is plenty fast enough it's really kind of hot hatch territory and yes, admittedly, things like the Golf R, the RS3, the A45S are quicker. Now, I love hot hatches, and actually I probably will have one again in future. I'm not saying that this is better than a hot hatch, because I'm not. It's great, but they're totally different. But for similar powers, it's nice that you have a different selection than just the standard choice. Now, lots of people want to know the running costs. Now, fortunately, this is only a two litre car. So running costs themselves aren't too bad. On a day-to-day -day basis, when you're doing short journeys, it's probably gonna get about, about 28 to 30 miles per gallon. And on a motorway cruise, you're more likely to get 34 to 35 miles per gallon. Tax is about 450 pound a year. Insurance-wise, that's totally up to your circumstances, but best check it out on Go Compare, all those kind of guys. Now, when it comes to financing the car, people will do it different ways. Some people will go and pay the car outright with cash, some people will go into different types of financing agreements. Now to give you an example of a PCP finance agreement, when I bought this car it was roughly £44,000. I put in a 15-ish percent deposit and I pay roughly £500 a month. I do around about 12,000 miles a year and I did that on a four-year agreement. However, it totally depends on what you do in your circumstances. Again, I did buy with Porsche Financial Services because they did a very good job, they did a good APR rate and I was happy with the terms. But there are several different brokers out there and lenders that will look at you, will help you out with a PCP agreement. So again, check them out. Things like Magnitude Finance have an online calculator, which I would definitely check out. Oh, and one thing, if you want to go and buy a Porsche, I bought mine from Dick Lovett in Swindon, and I bought it from a guy called Jordan. He was a great guy. He's a really, really good salesperson there. And if you need anything, give Jordan at Swindon a ring. Now, practicality wise, this car is great. With the boot at the front and the boot at the back, it means I have plenty of storage for overnight bags, laptop bags, all the kind of things I need. Fortunately, that mid-engine configuration gives me the ability to have a boot at front and back. Now, there are some things that I found when I've been driving this car over the last kind of couple of years that I've had it. Number one is that the seatbelt on the left-hand side sometimes rattles if you go over a certain bump. So sometimes I click it in, but yeah, that can be quite annoying. Also, there's some sort of rattle somewhere, and I think it's coming from the back. Now, Porsches are a German car. They are very well made. However, sometimes there are little rattles that do pick up. And the last thing to be aware of is that the cabin noise when you're driving at more high speeds on dual carriageways and motorways 
is quite loud. So looking back at the car from the outside, the inside, driving the car, what do we think? Well, I know I think it's great. I really, really like the car. I wouldn't have personally bought it if I didn't like it a lot. Now, have I fallen in love with the car? At first, no, I didn't. I spent a couple of months thinking, I'm not really sure. But the funny thing is with the 718, and actually I think Porsche, is that you start to love them over time. At the beginning, the car was fantastic, mechanically incredibly fast, a really impressive car, but not something I loved, like I did with my Mini. As time's gone on, I've appreciated it more and more every time I've driven it. And that's rare, I think, in a car. It's most likely that you're excited at the beginning, you love it. And as you go on, you start to get a little bit bored of it. But it seems that I'm going the other way. And as I pass, you know, coming up to a couple of years in the car, I'm actually really enjoying it more and more, which is great. Now, I think this car is great value for money. And I have done another video, which I'll put on the screen now. Have a little look and see what you think. But I think it's great. And that leads me nicely onto the end of the video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to future videos, but for now, I will see you very, very soon. I've got the time. Right, intro one. Oh, here we go. Exhaust type, fuck, types, exhaust types. See what it's like. Plus. Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. But now I think it's time.